Hello and welcome to another science vision video. Now in this vision video we're looking at diffusion in living cells. Now some of this work we'll also be covering in chemistry videos because there's a, there's a common theme here but let's look first of all at what is diffusion. Now you imagine standing um, in a room and spraying air freshener in the corner of the room. Now does the air freshener just stay in the one corner? No, obviously it doesn't. The particles will spread out in all directions to eventually the air freshener smell will occupy the whole room. This means the particles have actually spread out and what they've done, they've now occupied occupied all of the available space. Now the other examples of diffusion, for example, you know, you're lying in bed in the morning and someone's downstairs frying bacon, the smell wafts up from the kitchen, that's diffusion. You have a party and you tie your balloons outside the house, tell people your house is, and you come back a few days later and the balloons have all gone down, that's because air is leaked out by diffusion from inside the balloon. And lastly, if you have sugar in your tea, when you dissolve it, when you stir it and dissolve it, the sweetness doesn't taste in one part of the cup of tea, it's all over the tea. So again, diffusion has spread out. So by definition, diffusion is the movement of particles from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration until they are evenly spread. Diffusion depends on the random movement of particles. Okay, so particles are constantly moving and because of that they diffuse. Now diffusion is slower in liquids than in gases. So gases it happens very very quickly, in liquids it happens slower and this is because liquid particles are not as free to move as gas particles. And you can guess that in solids diffusion happens very very slowly if at all. Right, let's look at living organisms. Here's a very simple animal cell. Let's think what has to diffuse into an animal cell. We have to diffuse in food and also oxygen. And coming out we'll be losing carbon dioxide and waste products again by diffusion. Let's look at an actual cell. Here's a, here's a, a single celled organism living in fresh water called amoeba. This is a living organism lives in fresh water called amoeba. Okay, Now what happens here? Well as amoeba uses up oxygen by respiration, a low oxygen concentration develops inside the amoeba. In the surrounding water, there is a higher oxygen concentration. So surprise, surprise, oxygen will move from a high concentration here to a low concentration here. So oxygen will move from a high concentration outside the cell to a lower concentration inside the cell. It is moving from high to low. It's moving down what we call a concentration gradient. Now this is a common thing about um, diffusion. Diffusion goes from a high concentration, it could be oxygen, to a low concentration. Or it could be um, any other sort of particles, I think, going from high concentration to a low concentration. So think about low as being the bottom of the gradient and the stuff's moving down the gradient from high to low. In any um, living organisms, diffusion occurs in many places. So where diffusion occurs in living organisms, the surfaces across the gases are exchanged, uh, sorry, the surfaces across which gases are exchanged are often specialised and they have large surface areas. Why a large surface area? Well that increases the rate of diffusion. Okay? The example here is the human lungs. Now the lungs have got inside them little things called alveoli and what they do, they provide a huge surface area. Now I don't know how much truth there is in it but you often read somewhere, if you took all the alveoli and spread them out, you'd have an area the size of a tennis court inside your lung, which is enormous, isn't it? But it's really effective with the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay, so that is diffusion in living organisms. Thanks for watching this science vision video, and for more free videos, just visit my um, site at www.sciencevisionvideos.com. Okay, thanks for watching, I'll be back with you again very soon.